Well, uh, we started on this really about 20 years ago, doing some work on deception that was done uh, for some government agencies uh, and some of the first honeypot work. We moved on from that because people didn't seem interested in it. About five or six years ago, I revisited this with several students, realizing that a lot of what we had built had been built simply to work. And as a result, the people who built it included error messages that gave away a lot of information because it was intended for debugging as well as for information. We wanted to uh, really deploy standard real-world security concepts of camouflage and hiding and deception and misdirection. So some of the first work we did was in a, a formal taxonomy of uh, various deception techniques. And since then, we have started building some endpoint deception rather than the network uh, deception that a lot of the companies are doing now. So things on deceptive memory to uh, defeat anti-forensic measures and deceptive patching to defeat people who try to do reverse engineering of patches to find vulnerabilities. It's a wide open field with a lot of possibility. Are you, I guess, buoyed by the deception practices that are going on out there? I mean, do you really see that they're effectively decreasing sort of attacks on legitimate networks? They're not necessarily decreasing the attacks. They are putting up the workload of attackers and increasing some of the uh, potential to identify that an attack is underway. Because if resources are being spent by attackers um, on systems that either don't exist or are giving false results, that's not resources that they're spending attacking the real systems. That can give us an advantage. So that part is actually uh, a, a good sign. We're moving in some uh, the right direction. We still have too many people who, who believe uh, the meme that uh, there's no security through obscurity, and that's actually a corruption of Kirchhoff's law of encryption, and uh, really shows a lack of understanding of basic security practice. So we're still fighting that. So do you believe that there is security through obscurity, or is it's a more complex notion? It's a more complex notion you can get additional security through obscurity or through deception, but it shouldn't be your primary form of security. And that's where the, uh, the understanding seems to fall down with many of the people involved. Uh, the people who sort of uh, chant that believe that any kind of uh, obfuscation is uh, useless effort, and it's not. And we see that in the real world, the natural world. We see it in uh, military tactics and intelligence and even in criminality with various kinds of fraud, being uh, deceptive can increase the workload and frustrate attackers, although it's not a perfect defense all by itself.